welcome to CabSats TV right here in Dubai for 2015 and uh, some great panel discussions taking place this year in the NAB show conference hall. Uh, joined now by Matthew Kwok. Welcome to CabSat TV, Matthew. Thank you. Senior producer with ESPN yep. and responsible for possibly one of the, the biggest sports shows in the world. Yeah, senior operations uh, producer for Monday Night Football on ESPN. We also uh, run a production company called Quackman Productions that does a lot of other sports and whatnot as well. But our main focus during the fall is Monday Night Football. Um, very large show, 41 cameras, uh, 20 EVSs. Uh, it's you know a rolling circus every week. We have uh, over 4,000 square feet of workspace that is our mobile units, our uplink trucks, the freight haulers, the bus studio. Um, it's just a very large show and uh, upwards of 375 people per week travel to this uh, event to make it what it is on air. And of course it's a heritage show, I mean it's a big tradition in the States isn't it? We get it in the UK and I know it's out in the uh, Middle East as well. Yeah. We just finished our 45th season, I cannot tell you that I've been to all of them. <laughs> Actually I, uh, Monday Night Football came to ESPN in 2006 so I've been with, um, with that show since 2006. Um, but yes, it's, it's a long long sta standing legacy. I believe it is the uh, oldest sports, uh, consecutive sports broadcast that there is in, in America. Um, and and that, with that comes a huge responsibility to make sure we have high quality, uh, it's, it's entertaining, and it's what people want to watch. So with that heritage and bringing that through all those years, uh, certainly with ESPN from uh, 2006, uh, bringing that forward, um, you have the responsibility, but we've, we've changed, haven't we, from certainly in the States from a, to a multi-channel world, but now multi-platform, and we know it's impacted in so many different areas of entertainment. Is that the same for the sports industry? Yes, absolutely. So Bunny Night Football is now available on everything from an Xbox to any platform, Xbox, tablet um, you know on your computer as well as traditional cable uh, it, it has started to change the way we think about our audience um, I think one of the major importances on the second screen side of things is understanding that social media uh, dot com uh, you know that sort of thing they're they're all very important to what we do and uh, it's almost a second avenue for us to actually push some other content that isn't uh, isn't ready for our big screen but is actually good quality content that our people our fans and our audience would want so you're certainly not seeing the multi-platform um, uh, strategy as anything which is diverting your audience it's more increasing it yeah and you know something like fantasy football that's a huge driver um, for, for a second screen uh, application what what happens is even on a game where there's a 30 point spread normally people are clicking off the TV okay but actually they they really because of that second screen because of that fantasy league they actually want to watch their individual players so on a game that we would normally see a fall off at halftime because it's a huge spread we've actually seen an uptick a little bit in in the games that are uh, you know less exciting because people want to watch the game. So what challenges, I mean I can hear some great innovation there, but what challenges yeah. does that, that second screen, that multi-platform angle create for you? Well so I mean I think it's um, a couple of different things. Uh, the synchronization, synchronization of the second screen and the actual uh, television screen, uh, that, that presents a little bit of a challenge that you know we're working through at this point. Um, I think also rights, um, you know in the last set of rights deals, more and more is focused on um, on the second screen and uh, digital content, uh, and I think the leagues as well are realizing that it's more valuable. So I think uh, just understanding the, those rights and how valuable they are to us, I think that's uh, a challenge. And uh, but it's exciting moving forward. So the panel discussion today, the future of sports. What sort of things were brought up by the audience and the other people on the panel? Um, one of the major things that that we were talking about was statistics and graphics because a lot of huge sports fans, we like to cater to a lot of people, but we understand that there's some real sports fans that watch Monday Night Football and a lot of the other content on ESPN. Um, the stats and, and the graphics, we don't want it to feel invasive. I think one of the biggest things is that, um, you know, the technology for organic graphics, for uh, 3D graphics for you know virtual graphics. I think they're all you know moving right along so that there's it's less innovative. In, sorry, less invasive to what we're doing uh, on screen. Um, I think also the second screen allows us to do that. Allows us to pump data 
uh, pump sports data for that sports nut that really wants to know how many steps the guy's taken in one game, you know, that sort of thing. So that's that's there. Uh, I think additionally the new, new technologies that are coming out, you know, are, are going to be something that's exciting for us to see. We have high-speed uh, cameras that just keep getting faster and better and clearer. Uh, from our standpoint, you know, we love replays. We absolutely love replays and we love seeing that on the air. And so that's, that's great for us. And then always you're going to see continued uh, growth in the resolution. You know, the better resolution uh, equals better quality TV. And I think that's what we're looking at moving forward. And the trends for the future, where do you think it's going to go? No crystal ball, I know, but where do you think it's going to go? I think trends of the future, the second screen will continue to develop. And I think um, from the standpoint of fan engagement, I think it's always going to be, uh, you know, listening to what they want and continue to develop that second screen so that uh, we're giving the fan what they want. You know, uh, we, we talked on the panel a little bit about customization of watching TV. Obviously, you can't do that on traditional cable, um, but you can second, you know, customize that second screen so that people can get what they want out of it as opposed to us driving them to force to watch what they want. Matthew, great insight. Thank you for your time.